Okay, so we put out the Soldier Boy video the other day about a shooting incident, and you reached out to me and told me that you were actually the person in the story in terms of the shooting, and you want to tell your side of the story. So let's go ahead and start in the very beginning. How did you get to meet Soldier Boy, and what kind of business dealings did you have with him beforehand? The way I met Soldier Boy, first, this Murphy Lee, his showstopper, the G, Flowmaster, Dingo, showstopper, the Ted Money Game. I met Soldier Boy through Smurf. He re actually he reached out to us, cause back in the day all we did was dance. We created up half stuff that came through Soldier Boy, most of the stuff. From the, from the Crank the Superman all the way up to the Wood Rico. Okay, so you guys are saying that the Crank, that, that was actually your dance? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Okay. So, you guys were, were hanging out with Soldier Boy then? No, nah, we were never hanging out. He reached out to us because we was always in the parties dancing. We always had the parties lit. He needed flavor, so he came at us. Okay, and this was... What, before he had his first album out? Yeah, this was before he was Soldier Boy. Okay. So then what happened next? What happened next? He took off with the Crank the Superman dance. He got hyped. We had uh, created a song called What Rico. That was hype in the city at the time. That was around 2007, 2008. Okay. So after you say that he took the whole crank that dance and everything else like that. Did you guys still keep in touch or no? Yeah, we still kept, we still kept in touch because we were signed to his record label. Okay, so you guys signed to SODMG? Yeah. All right. So you guys are signed to his label. And then what happens? Well, he had an album release party one night. And us, me and the showstoppers, we went up there because we supposed to be having our song on the album. But we never knew that his verse was going to be on there. So once we heard his verse, Smurf was like, you need to go talk to him about that. Because me being a manager, that's what I was supposed to do. So when I went to go talk to him, a uh, good conversation turned bad. Okay, what does that mean? We were talking about contracts. We were talking about money. And he went from saying, uh, we ain't getting nothing, basically. He ain't gonna give him nothing because he gotta take care of himself first. Okay, so when you say that, that his verse was, was there or your verse was taken off, like what do you mean by that exactly? What I mean is we had a, a great song and when he put his verse on there, it turned bad. So he took y'all's verses off that song? He took, he took one of my artist's verses off the song, which was the first verse. Okay, he put his verse on it instead? Yeah, he put his verse on it. Okay, so did any of your artists show up on his album? Yes, Smurf was on the album. Dingo was on the album. Okay, so got you guys no were on the album, but just not that one particular song. Yeah, we're on the album with, with Rico. With the song, with Rico. Okay. So you get into the conversation with Soldier Boy, and he tells you y'all ain't getting nothing. Yeah, basically. And that pissed me off for him to be able to even tell me that to my face. Okay, so when he told you that, what happened next? I slapped him. <laughs> okay. Open hand? Open hand. All right, so then what happened? After I slapped him, he reached for his pistol and just started letting, lock. He just started letting all his shots off. I got hit five times out of those 16. Okay, so this actually happened at his house? At his house, same night. Because Soldier Boy said he had some sort of album release party. I heard you were at an album release party, you were at your house, and between three and six dudes with masks came in with AK-47s. So basically, I bought this club in Atlanta called Excalibur. You bought a club? Yeah. Okay. I own this club in Atlanta called Club Excalibur. I bought it. It was always the lit spot. All the rappers come, everybody always come. It was like um, my album release party at my club. We chilling in the club. Some niggas followed me back to my crib. I got a double gate in my community at the time. I'm living in Atlanta, Georgia in the mansion. Double gates, niggas come through the gate. Well, so you got a security gate and then a gate in front of your house? 
No, I got a gate. You get to the gate, you go through that gate, and you gotta go through another gate. Okay, so it ain't like a security gate with security guards and stuff yeah. like that. No, it wasn't, yes, niggas, it wasn't nobody at the gate. So I'm sitting in the, uh, it's four of us. Uh, Jabbar went in to take the trash out. He come back in, soldier. I just seen some fans ride by the house uh, while I was taking the trash out. I said, what the fuck? Some fans grab the pistol, go outside, look, I don't see shit, come back in the crib. I'm in the studio listening to some beats. All I hear is boom, real loud. Instantly stop the music. I just hear it. I hear it. I hear do do my, my partner say, man, who the fuck in, who the fuck in this crib? A rap passed me the pistol. Bam, I look through the door. I see like three, four niggas running through the crib. All black mask on running through the crib and shit. One nigga run to the front door. I hop out, I start shooting. Bow, 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 bow. Shot the nigga. Were you guys at that release party? Yeah, we was there. So at the release party, did you talk to him at all? I didn't talk to him. I told him I would meet him at this house afterwards. Okay, so you had the release party and then you went to Soldier Boy's house afterwards? Yes, sir. Okay, was it, was it just you or was it you with, with the rest of the guys? Actually, it was me and Dingo. Okay. So you guys show up at his house, and he opens the door and lets you in and everything? Yeah, he let us in and everything. So what you're saying is this whole home invasion thing never happened? Basically. He had to cover himself. Okay. So you were invited into his home, and then you had a conversation with him where you told, told him you were upset about the you know, about the song, and then you say that you slapped him. I did slap him, I don't say. Okay. So when you slapped him, what did your man do? He wasn't even in the house. Okay. Now, when Soldier Boy said that he had a bunch of other people, like, uh, who, who are some of the people he said was at his house at the time? Uh, J-Bar? J-Bar, so Killer. Okay, so they were all there at the house, too? All of them. Okay, so you slapped him open hand, and then he pulled out his gun? That's exactly what he did. And then he, he just like shot this. you? He went just like this. I said, what you gonna do with that? So I slapped him again. Two times. Two times. Okay. And then after you slapped him again, he let off? That's when he let off. That's when I got hit right here. In, my, in the front of my thigh. That was the first shot. How many times did you get hit? Five. What are the different areas you got hit? I got hit right here on my arm. You know I, mean? I got right, hit right here on my way. I got right here on my front of my thigh. Then I got two in my ass. And what, you try to turn around and run, or, or what happened? I do turn around and run. I make it out the house. Okay. So you've been shot, what, four times? Five. Five times. You've been shot five times. So every bullet he shot, he hit you with? Nah. He let off 16. Oh, he emptied the whole clip? Yeah, he emptied the whole clip. So he shoots 16 times in your direction. You get hit five times in your body. Yes, sir. Uh, what does your man do with this? Oh, your man's not even in the house. No, he's not even in the house. Okay, but you told me that y'all two came together. We did come together, but I came in the house before he did. He was outside on the phone. Okay. So he's on the phone and suddenly all hell breaks loose in the house. Basically, he seen me come outside, he come and get me. What about all the other guys at Soldier Boy's house? Well, what did they start doing at this point? They took off. I, they took off. I ain't had, really want to even pay no attention to them. I worry about myself. Right. So you, you get hit five times. You, you run outside. You see your man out there. What happens next? We leave. I'm unconscious at that time. Okay. And so what? He takes you in the car and what? Takes you to the hospital? Yeah. I woke up in Grady. Okay. When you woke up, 
uh, how how bad was it? How bad was it? It was real bad because I was handcuffed to the bed and I didn't know why. Oh, so you were actually arrested at that point? No, I was just handcuffed, so <laughs> I wouldn't go nowhere. Okay, because the police are trying to figure out what happened? Yeah. So you wake up handcuffed to the bed. You're, at that point, did they already pull the bullets out of you? I believe so. I still had a bullet left in me in my arm, but most of the, the bullets in my lower part of my body was out. Okay, so they operated on you while you were unconscious? Yeah. Okay. So, so they pull all the bullets, most of the bullets out of you. You're handcuffed to the bed. You're fucked up because you've just been shot five times. What happens next? Do the police come in and question you? or? But yeah, police come in and question me, all that. They really ain't had no, they really had no real evidence or no uh, home invasion, so they let me go home. Two weeks later, they came and picked me up. So, so they, they unhandcuff you. Do, does the hospital keep you for a while, or do they release yeah, you Yeah, right I was in the hospital for a couple of days. Okay. So then a couple of days later, you get released from the hospital. Yeah. What happens next? I go home. Then, they, like, probably like three days after they released me from the hospital, they came and got a statement from me. Then after they came, I left. I came to the east side. I came... I went to my baby mama house at that moment. Well, when the police asked you for a statement, what did you tell them? I told them I ain't did what he said. I told him I went there for a meeting. I told him I went in there to go talk about my business. And he tripped out. So you told them the soldier boy shot you? Yeah, I told them that. They thought it was a joke. Why, why would they think that it's a joke? Because obviously you've been shot. I don't know. So, so the police ask you who shot you. You told them Soldier Boy shot you. And, and you're saying that they didn't, they didn't pursue the case? Nah, I told them Soldier Boy shot me, and they came and locked me up. You got locked up? Yeah, I got locked up. Because he, so he said I tried to rob him. So you're saying the Soldier Boy told the police that you try to rob him, that's why he shot you? Yeah, that was the reason. Okay, so that's, so that's two sides of the story that the police are hearing and both sides don't match up with one another. So how, how does the police figure out what the next step is? They don't figure out what the next step is. I just sit in county for nine months and take a plea. So, before you took the plea, what were they charging you with? I was charged with armed robbery, false imprisonment, kidnapping, uh, possession of a firearm with a convicted felon, possession of a firearm, commission of a crime, aggravated assault. But when you were at Soldier Boy's house, did you have a gun on you? No. So all these charges that you're, you're, you're naming right now, mm. how are you getting these charges if what you're saying, none of them, none of them are matching those, up? Those are all chunk charges that they threw on me all because of what he said. So it was your word against his at that point? Basically. I think money talk. That's what, that's what I think. So you got a bunch of charges on you at this point. Yeah. How, how, how much, if you had blown trial, how many years were you facing? I was facing 25 to life. 25 to life. So you, you were basically looking at the rest of your life in prison? Basically. How do you go from 25 to life? Okay, so hold on, before I even get into that. They're telling you you're facing 25 to life. Then what kind of plea deals are they offering you? They offer me a uh, 15 do 10. Then they offer me a 7 do 3. Then they offered me a 10 do one. And I was already in county for nine months. 10 years do one year, that's what you're saying? Yeah. Why, why, why is there such a, I mean, why is the number so different? One year, 10 years, that's not even close. Because the evidence didn't the evidence add up to what he was saying. 
And I had a great lawyer, two of them. Okay. How much did you spend in lawyer fees? <laughs> <laughs> more, more money than we had at the time. I spent I spent thirty thousand on Brian Steele and I spent twenty thousand on Dead Wright. Okay, so you spent fifty thousand defending yourself. Yeah. Okay, so that fifty thousand took you from twenty five to life to one year. Better than with, nothing. Not, with, with nine months served, which really meant you had to stay in jail for three more months. Yeah. I mean, that, that sounds like a pretty good deal right there. That's a great deal if you ask me, instead of taking it to trial. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess this is why you, you spent a lot of money on lawyers right there. So, you take the plea deal, I assume. Yeah. So you stay in, in, in county for three more months or they transfer you to uh, I went down the road, prison? I went to Paulding. Okay. So you spent three more months in in a real prison. Yeah. As opposed to county. Okay, and then three months later you get out. Yeah. Since that time, did you ever try to reach out to Soldier Boy? I'm saying, I ain't gonna lie, I have. But I don't get no response. Okay. So, after the incident happened, there were these videos that started to come out and there's like these dudes in like these black hoods with, with guns, you know, breaking down the whole soldier boy robbery situation and so forth. Uh, clearly, you know about this. Yeah, I know all about that. That was hilarious to me. Okay, did y'all have anything to do with that? Nah, not at all. So you're saying just some random people started taking it upon themselves to make these stories up? I guess so. If you ask me, I think he did it. So y'all didn't have nothing to do with it? Nah, not at all. No, you told you, you told you that no Okay. So, Soldier Boy's story about the armed robbery and the home invasion and was there anything to do with Jay Bar at all? Because he seemed to be part of the story as well. I don't even know what, what he had going on that night. He was so scared. Well, so essentially what you're saying is, is the, based on, on what you're telling me, it's a completely different story than, because, you know, when he did the interview with me, this wasn't the first time that he, he talked about that incident. He had talked about it on a couple other occasions. Yeah. I'm right here, man. I ain't went nowhere. You been talking about I'm dead? Nah, I'm right here. Full of fat. So you got to know he lying. Like, That's why he can't come into a room. He telling people he dead. And trust me, if I would have robbed him, I wouldn't be here or he wouldn't be here. One of us be gone. So you still have a bullet lodged in you? Nah, I took it out myself. Oh, okay. You went to, you got an operation, get it taken out? Nah, it was already coming out. So I just went ahead and pinched it out. It was coming yeah. out on its own. Okay. Uh, how badly were you fucked up after the shooting? I was fucked up, like, I was real fucked up. What, were you in a wheelchair? I couldn't walk. Okay. Uh, how long were you in a wheelchair until, until you were able to walk again? Uh, see, I was walking after probably, I'd say, a week and a half. I was walking before I, they picked me up to go to county. All right, so, so Mike Dingo, you went with Drew to Soldier Boy's house. Yeah, because initially, like, we all went to the club together because at the time, um, we had a DJ by the name of um, Pretty Boy Tank, and he's the one who actually um, told us about the, the song, about Soldier Boy alternating our, our song or whatnot, taking somebody off of the song or, and all of that. And at the time, Soldier Boy was in town, so he reached out to us and told us to come to the... Uh, his little album release party at the club or whatnot. So um, I guess Droop and him had some uh, kind of conversation about meeting up afterwards or whatnot. And um, he went in there. From what I saw, I was in the car with, with a little female or whatnot. And from what I saw, I just saw Droop come out the front door. I saw 
they Hummer, at the time he had a Hummer, it left the scene or whatnot, and I just saw Droop laying on the floor. So then I went and I helped Droop up, got him to the hospital. And at the time, like, I'm frantic. I don't know what's going on because I just see my boy come out the house. They gone, everything is like discombobulated. I take him and then that's when I find out or whatnot that um, they had a, that like what he had told the police and all that. And then I started getting the story because at the time I couldn't even really get in contact with, uh, with Droop because he was so messed up. Even going to the hospital, like I thought he was almost dead. He was on the verge of like being dead like that. He's the first person, the closest person to me that I can say that I saw dead, like going to the, to the hospital. And that actually scared me because at the time we all like 19, 20 years old, we go from playing Xbox with Soldier Boy and we see our boy shot on the floor and shit. Like, and I just want to say this about the whole situation. Like, I don't even want to get into everything like as far as what he did to our group because he knows what he did and he knows that out of everybody he had around him, we were the most loyal people to him. Like, it doesn't matter if he called us at two o'clock in the morning when we had a show that he had a problem, people knocking on his door for us to come up there and help him out, look out for him and stuff, we up for him. If he at the house, he in town, he needs something, we there for him. We the first people to give him his first Gucci Man DVD. Like, you know what I'm saying? He putting all this flex and all that, and he knows what time it is. So for him to be saying that he killed somebody, took the mask off of him, all this, that's not helping nobody, nobody's, uh, nobody's publicity right there. Like, he doing, he's, he's taking this the whole wrong way. The only reason why he's doing this is because we never reached out like how Droop did, because all that shit that we went through really scarred us. Like, we went from some really dancing ass niggas to some nine to fives, from having fun doing what we like doing to just going back to being some regular people. And even to this day, like when we go out, people just can see that we're not regular people. Like, they'll just ask us, like, are y'all celebrities? Do y'all rap? Y'all do music or something? Cause we don't carry ourselves like that. We're not, we're not that, that fuck nigga that he wants us to be. That's not us. We were all in school at the time. We were all in doing music, all of that. You know what I'm saying? And we still doing that kind of stuff, you know? So for him to even put us in that category, like what he's trying to perceive himself as, as that gangster it, that we're not, I don't agree with that. Like, you know what I'm saying? He didn't kill my boy. This is about Droop right here, Act, really. This whole, this whole video, this whole story right here is about Droop. He's not dead and he need to stop all that. We got proof, we got records, we got evidence showing that he was the only one shooting in the house. We got evidence showing that he was not there. Statements of him snitching, if he wants to go that route and be the gangster, we got statements of him snitching, talking to the police. We got statements of him not even being at the scene of the crime when the police pulled up to the scene, him throwing the gun away at a trash, at a dumpster. Like, it's just so much stuff to that case to why they would drop that shit from aggravated assault, from somebody being, looking at 25 to life to going and getting a criminal trespass in a, in a, uh, uh, um. He dated community or something? Yeah, a, a criminal trespassing and aggravate, uh, like a simple battery, simple battery for a threat. Basically, that's what they charged us with. You see what I'm saying? Oh, okay. So, you and Droop show up at Soldier Boy's house. Droop goes inside, and you just wait outside on the porch, or? No, I was actually in my in my vehicle. Like I was talking on the phone with, and I was in the car with another female with somebody else that rode with us to the club. So I was outside at the time. It was no need for me to go in there because my group wasn't with us. So. I thought Droop, as Droop being basically like the face of our group, he went in there to talk to him. It was no need for me to go in there. So, I mean, oh. yes, sir? Okay, so you're outside in the car with this girl. Do you hear the gunshots go off? I see, I heard like 
I heard the first three, I heard the first three, the female that I was with heard it first, really, because I was on the phone talking. And then I started listening. And then that's when I started just hearing a bunch of shots going off. And then I saw the front door swing open. And then I saw Droop like stumbling and he fell on the grass. And then after that, nobody else came out through the front door. And I just saw the Hummer leaving the garage area and then it just swerved off. And then that's when I got out the car. Like I didn't know what was going on. So I waited and I saw the Hummer drive off. And then I went out and saw Droop laying on the floor shot. I tried, I helped him up. He was still somewhat con conscious, so he helped me get him up off the ground. Then I got him to the hospital. Were you questioned by the police at this point when you dropped him off at the hospital? See, at the time, I left because I didn't know what was going on. So I didn't know what to tell the police, but they were actually like looking for us. Like it got to the point where like later on that night, my mom had contacted me. She was frantic, yelling crying and all of that. And then I had told her to find me a lawyer because I didn't know what was going on. I just saw, all I know is my friend got shot or whatnot. And then that's when like, I started, I was on the internet. I started seeing that Soldier Boy started posting shit. He started making, vid he started, he made a song like that same night, a music, a music song talking about it, shooting somebody. Like he just started, like that's when I started seeing all of that stuff and it was like, damn, this shit is really like crazy. Like this is what the fuck going on. Like, you know what I'm saying? But when, when it happened, Droop never went in there with a mask and nothing like that. Like that's why I'm not getting, like he's saying all this mask. He's saying he took a mask off. Like how, when, how, Where's this evidence? Where's all this proof? Where's this, this stuff that you saying that they took off Droop and all this? Okay, so Droop, you drop off Droop at the hospital. He gets handcuffed by the police. The police start looking for you because you're somehow involved in this whole situation. You get a lawyer and what, you turn yourself into the police? Yes, sir. I went in, I talked to him. They interviewed me or whatnot, and I left. May 5th comes around. I'm packing my stuff, about to get ready to walk out the door. I hear banging on the door. Uh, my aunt goes to the door. It's, po it's the police. I get locked up. All I know is they got the same stuff that they had from the beginning. I just get locked up. I was in jail for maybe like all of like 20 days, 20 22 days. They gave me a bond of like $100,000. Um, the case went on for about like two years and then they just dropped all of that stuff. That was Okay, so when you were locked up and had to post that bond, what, what did they charge you with? Same thing they charged Droop, Droop with, everything. Having so, a weapon uh, during the commission. Our, bur our robbery, burglary, all that? All of that. Okay, but after 22 days, they let you out? Yes, sir. And then they never pursued any sort of charges after that? No, sir. Well, if Soldier Boy was here right now, what would you tell him? Man, I tell that man, he need to pay up, man. My artist need that bread. Yeah. I know he's still getting paid yeah. off that. He took all the swag from my boy G right here. He need all that. We need that money bag ASAP. That's all I say. Well, how much, how much do you feel the Soldier Boy owes you? Everything he, everything he got, he owe me. Realistically, everything. From the dances that he used to wear, to the dance move, to the clothes with the paint on it. All of that was us. That was us all day. Well, it's, it's a crazy ass story, man. It's a crazy ass story. I mean, what, what made you reach out this time? You know, because he had told that story before. What made you reach out this one time? And, and actually, I got like, I got like ten, I got like ten emails this morning. Saying, y'all seen this? Like, you people ask me, was I dead? Like, as a joke, though, you feel me? They know what's going on. And Soulja Boy can't come back to Atlanta for a reason. He ain't had no show money, no type of money being made in Atlanta for almost 10 years for a reason. He ain't from here. Bankhead Simpson, he claimed that he ain't from nowhere around here. And, and since the incident, you've never seen each other, nothing like that? Nah. Come around. 
<laughs> nah, he ain't been out here. He can't even come to the radio station and drop his single. Okay, so that's that's essentially the whole story. Uh, you and your man both do do some prison time. Uh, you end up doing a year. Your man does a month, uh, and then the story gets painted a different type of way uh, for Soldier Boy. The, the the one thing that that everyone always asks about is the whole thing with the mask, and you know I took his mask off, but <laughs> ain't nobody had no mask on to take off. Okay, now now you wanted to add something to the story? Yeah, like um, I'm the I'm the creator of a lot of stuff, you know, like. Showstoppers, that was my group. You know, I'm the one he actually reached out to. And, you know, but at that time, we had a song called Billie Jean, Crack That Billie Jean or something, I believe. You know, by the Showstoppers, of course. And we actually had, he actually had a video of him dancing in that ugly ass 300 Chrysler, you know what I mean, to our song. You know what I'm saying? Looking boogie as hell, country as hell, because he's a country boy, you understand? He not from Atlanta. He not no city nigga. You know what I mean? Like, so with that being said, you know, we we were kind of iffy with fucking with him because, I mean, he already had bit my bit brush swag back here with the flow master with the with the paint on the glasses and all that, and the shirts and whatnot, and then even the crank that all that because this is Atlanta. That's Atlanta's lingo. That's Atlanta swag. That's Atlanta sauce. All that drip there is us. You understand? So. We was kind of iffy fucking with the off-brand nigga, you feel me? But we kind of, we were young. We were young at the, same, at the same time we were young and we were fucked up, you know what I'm saying? We doing this because we, 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 we having fun, you know what I'm saying? We getting in the club for free because they know, we known for cranking that bitch, doing our dancing at the time, you know what I'm saying? That's what we was on, you know? Anybody can tell you that. Parlay, lean with it, rock with it, walk, walk it out, DJ Unk, all like, all them videos, all them little videos back then, crank that yank, all them Lil John, snap your fingers, all that back then, that was us. That was us. <laughs> if you wanted the showstoppers, it was the Flowmasters. If you wanted the Flowmasters, it was the showstoppers. Facts. Showtime ENT. You understand? That was just what was going on. We still, I still got this on my hand, man. Showtime on my hand, man. You feel me?